As a sound tech at church, you not only have to possess a wide array of technical knowledge, but you also need an understanding of where each instrument fits in the mix. And even then, every song is different. And if you feel overwhelmed with it all, you're not alone. The good news is once you understand where each instrument fits in the mix, it all becomes a whole lot easier. So let's talk about it. This video is brought to you by Behringer X32 Mastery, the fastest way for church sound techs to master the X32. And with a team license, you can enroll unlimited team members now and in the future. Finally, everyone will be on the same page. Visit x32.church or click the link in the description to learn more. On top of every great mix is the lead vocal. After all, one of the most irritating things for the congregation is when they can't understand the lead vocal. So work hard to make sure this doesn't happen. Now, the next layer is the instruments that create energy, the bass guitar and the drums. Here's a few questions to ask yourself to get these right. First, are the kick and bass married together or is one louder than the other? Is the energy in the room where you want it to be? If not, you probably need more kick and bass or maybe just better subs. Are the kick and bass getting lost in the mix? If so, make necessary adjustments as they should always be heard. It's quite the phenomenon. It may seem like the electric guitar is too loud when the real problem is the bass guitar is too quiet. Bottom line, other than the lead vocal, bass guitar and kick drum is where it's at. In the next layer is your lead instrument, which changes from song to song. For example, on the song Wake by Hillsong Young and Free, the synth is the lead instrument, whereas the lead instrument on Grace on Top of Grace by Fellowship Creative is the electric guitar. To achieve a great mix, you must first pay attention to what the lead instrument is in a specific song, then mix it right at the top of the background instrument and vocals. Which brings us to the final layer of a great mix, your background instrument and vocals. If you have a well-trained band, your background instruments will be playing in different areas of the frequency spectrum. For example, your rhythm electric guitar will be filling up the lower mid-range with bar chords, while the piano player is playing an arpeggiated pattern in the upper mid-range. This makes it easy to fill up the full frequency spectrum with background instruments and vocals. And keep in mind, it's okay if you can't quite pick out the background instrument and vocals, but you should notice if they're missing. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. I'd be glad to answer. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, give me a thumbs up to let me know. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the little bell so that we can let you know when a new video comes out. I'll see you next time.